Hey YouTube, 3D Printed Life here. Sorry for the long delay. Things have been insane lately. I've uh, been wrapping up my senior year of college, been applying to jobs. I have since accepted a job position for post-graduation. Uh, if you want to guess where it is, guess down below. If you know what it is, don't spoil it. I will be revealing it in my next video just because suspense and what's not. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about the Tronics YX5S, the upgrades I've done, uh, what I think of this machine, if it's worth it, and all that. Now, if you're interested in the machine, I have an affiliate link down below in the description. Ordering through there helps support the channel, which I'll be trying to get some more videos out over the next few months. So first off, what are my thoughts on this printer after a, a bit of use with it? Um, I probably only have maybe one or 200 hours of printing on it, but so far, so good. Haven't really had any failed prints. Bed adhesion with this BuildTac like surface is really good. Works just as well as BuildTac. The heated bed is slow, but that is something you can upgrade, which I will talk about in a second. And print quality is pretty good. Here is a print I did with the E3D Volcano hot end. And, I mean, as you can see, layer lines are large. There's quite a bit of drooping. Cooling could definitely be upgraded. But the overall surface finish is really nice. Um, there is no Z-banding. There are really no ringing artifacts going on. And this print was done very quickly. Now keep in mind, layer height is about... 0.36 for this guy, or 0.48, I forget. Uh, but still, the print only took about two hours, and this is a pretty good sized print. Also, as you can see, I have printed out this giant single shell Christmas tree. This is the max build volume of the printer, and it is enormous. It is 380 millimeters tall. You can go a bit taller with some tweaking, but this is about as tall as I could get out of the machine. Got a bit of a <laughs> messed up bottom going on here. That's simply because I didn't properly level the bed before printing this. This is one of my first prints. Basically, I just wanted to see how big I could go, and I was not disappointed. Finally, let's get talking about the upgrades I've done, what I would recommend to you guys, and the overall cost of this machine with upgrades. So first of all, base machine here, obviously not what you see, you see the upgraded one. Base machine is $285, give or take a bit, depending where you are and all that stuff. Now, if you want to get the most out of this machine, you have to do a few upgrades. I would say this upgrade is absolutely mandatory, and it only costs about 10 bucks plus some plastic. So really, there is no harm in doing this upgrade, and that is to correct the Core XY gantry so that these belts run parallel, because it is very important that these belts run parallel along the entire stretch. Otherwise, you're going to end up with different belt tensions as this gantry moves back and forth, and the result is going to be some um, deformed prints, not straight walls, and other bad things like that. So what you have to print, I will link the Thingiverse links down below as well. First of all, this new bracket to go on the other side of these idler wheels so that you can attach the belt over there. Secondly, you need a new plate so that you can space out uh, these guys like so. Also, this only has three wheels, as you can see, two on this side, one on the back, uh, whereas before it had four, and basically one of the wheels would really never be contacting it, so three wheels is just the better way to do it. It is how you properly define or constrain this piece, I should say. Backside, uh, obviously it's a bit different. You've got two pulleys like this, whereas before they were stacked on top of each other. This side is mirrored, and then I also had to print out a new motor mount just simply because I broke my other one. Uh, it just snapped as I was tightening it down. So you may have to print this as well. It is a bit stronger than the old one, so I'd probably recommend printing it just in case. Anyway, to do this, you will need to purchase these 608 skate bearings, which are inside all of these guys. Now, these bearings will cost you about 10 bucks. You'll need uh, eight of them. And it really improves it because, as you can see, you no longer have that messed up uh, stationary top washer as part of the idler. Now the entire idler rotates and there's going to be no extra wearing on that belt. Now additionally, you will need to get some new bolts. I don't remember exactly what size bolts I used because I just used whatever I had laying around. But basically this guy will have to be longer, it doesn't really matter how long, it's an M5 bolt. These two guys are new bolts, these two guys are new, these ones I believe are either 8 or 10 millimeters. Um, these two guys I have no idea. This one actually terminates right above the extrusion. so you still keep the original bolts attaching these two extrusions, and this one just goes to a nut on the other side. I would recommend you do it this way, not the way that the instructions describe, which is using a long bolt, because you want to have a good amount of clamping force in between these two extrusions. And if you add the 
long bolts up here, it's going to be clamping to this bottom extrusion from the top. You're not going to be able to get it as tight because this you can't go super tight on this idler, and the result's going to be a slightly less stable frame. So that upgrade is pretty cheap, but pretty time consuming. It does take a bit of effort in order to print all the parts and get them all installed. The next two upgrades are going to be very easy, very cheap, and also highly recommended, but definitely not necessarily required. So the first higher recommendation one is to get an E3D Volcano hot end. You could also get a V6, but basically any E3D hot end to upgrade the original one with is going to be a nice upgrade. The E3D hot ends are just so much smoother, the nozzles are so much nicer, you're going to get much more consistent printing, and you're not really going to get as many jams as you would with that included pretty junky hot end. Now this um, mount I have here is a custom designed one, it says Eclipse 3D, just because I could, but I'll also uplo I'll upload a version without that logo in case you just don't want it, because I'm sure most people won't want it. Basically uses the same fan, which definitely needs to be upgraded. And the way it mounts this actually is pretty clever, I'd say. It uh, integrates the whole fan and the ducting into this piece, and it vents out on the side over here, uh, and then on the back side, which you can't really see. So there is still enough airflow. I did test it, no jamming up or anything like that. And it also allows for a much more rigidly mounted hot end because basically I'm clamping this entire heat sink together rather than just that groove mount at the top. So the result pretty much speaks for itself. It's uh, pretty well mounted, pretty rigid, and it does help quite a bit considering there is a bit of flex in this whole assembly. Um, you know, it's not going to be perfect, so reducing flex wherever possible will help get you better quality prints. The next upgrade would be an E3D Titan extruder. I didn't actually do this because I didn't think it was entirely necessary, but I would recommend it. Right now, the one thing holding back print speed is that extruder can't keep up, especially with the higher volume output that the Volcano can handle. So going with a nicer E3D Titan extruder is definitely going to get you higher print speeds and probably more consistent extrusion. Final upgrade I'd recommend, although not quite nearly as much as the rest, is to go with a new controller and LCD. The one included is decent. It comes with an 8-bit controller. It's got, I believe, uh, A4988 drivers, pretty standard. Nothing too crazy here, but it works, and it works just fine. But if you're looking to get the extra mile out of the machine, I'd recommend going with a 32-bit controller like a smoothie board or a Duet Wi-Fi, something like that. Now, that is a pretty expensive upgrade, and it isn't exactly required, which is why I wouldn't really recommend it that much compared to the other ones. So now, what is this going to set you back? Uh, let's just talk about price. In the configuration I would recommend most is going with the Tronix YX5S, upgrading the whole Core XY system with the new bearings, getting the E3D Volcano and the E3D Titan Extruder. And the total cost of that whole system is going to be about $450 if you live in the US, which is really not bad at all considering what you get. I mean, you're getting this very large scale printer with a quality hot end, a quality extruder, and basically it's going to be similar in print quality to something like the Lulzbot, some large-scale printers like that, but you're spending a fraction of the cost. Reliability is pretty good. The whole extrusion system, of course, E3D is top-notch. The uh, mechanics of the gantry are pretty good. The Z-axis could use some improvement, but overall, it's really just going to be an amazing printer for $450. Now, the not-as-recommended configuration would be to go with all that and to go with the upgraded electronics that will set you back around 600 to 650 depending on the price. So that really does bump up the price quite a bit, but if you're looking for a truly high-end, all-around, uh, large-scale 3D printer, that may be what you want to go with. Now, finally, if you're going to be printing stuff other than PLA, uh, aka if you're printing something that requires a pretty good heated bed like ABS, you're going to want to upgrade the heated bed. Now, as it is, I think it's totally fine for printing PLA. It can get up to 45 degrees, in a few minutes and well if you're on a time crunch you should maybe upgrade otherwise it doesn't really matter but you can pretty easily get a 300 millimeter silicone heater slap it onto the bottom of this wire the existing heater and that new pad in parallel and hook them both up to a relay controlled by your controller the heated bed pin so that is a bit more complicated if you don't know what you're doing definitely look it up don't just do what i said and expect it to work if you don't haven't done this before but uh, going that route will set you back maybe another 50 bucks, but it will get you much quicker heat up times and much higher overall temperatures. So again, if you're only printing PLA or stuff that requires beds under 50 degrees Celsius, I don't think it's really worth it. But if you do want quicker heat ups 
or higher temperatures, it is probably worth that upgrade. So just to wrap this up, overall, very happy with this printer. It really is a very incredible printer for the price, and I'd say out of the box, it is not worth the $300 it costs. However, once you do some of these upgrades, it is well worth the $450 or so dollar price tag. So if you're looking for a more ready-to-go-out-of-the-box experience, I would recommend the CR10, CR10S, whatever. Plenty of videos about that on YouTube. It is going to be a bit more expensive to start, somewhere around $400. But coming out of the box, you're going to have a much better experience. If you don't mind tinkering, getting your hands dirty, doing a few very pretty simple upgrades, you can get a whole lot more bang for your buck out of this machine. Plus, it is a much better form factor. As you can see, it's just a simple cube, easier to transport, and takes up less space. So overall, I just like this design much better, and it really has way more potential than the CR-10S for much less cost. So that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Again, affiliate links down below, links to all the designs and the parts you may need down below. And if you have any questions or you want to uh, provide your own input, please leave a comment below. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you later.